Complaining about the way that your football team wins a game in the National Football League is the ultimate first world problems. We bougie though. We bougie. The Minnesota Vikings and runaway Kirk never coming back. They found a way to get it done against the Arizona Cardinals 34 to 26. They moved to 6 and 1 on the season and you do not win 5 games in a row in the National Football League by accident. And coming off the bye, uh the Vikings we're not rusty, even though it was an uneven game, and sometimes the Vikings wanted to lose, and sometimes the Cardinals wanted to lose. And overall, the Cardinals wanted to lose more, so they got the biscuit, uh, and the Vikings do get the W. So now it's on to the commies. Kirk Cousins' revenge game. It's good times. Oh, we had the Patrick Peterson-Jordan Hicks revenge game, and now we have the Kirk Cousins revenge game. It's going to be good times, man. But <sighs> this feels good, doesn't it? This feels good, doesn't it? And depending on when you're watching this video, uh, the Vikings – after the Packers get their ass kicked uh, by the Buffalo Bills Sunday Night Football, fingers crossed, knocking on all the wood, the Vikings will have a three-and-a-half game lead over the Greasy Grime and Green Bay Packers as well as an edge in the uh, one in the head-to-head -head spot uh, against the Packers. So, good times, man. Absolute good times. But, as always, we're recapping the winners and losers uh, from the game that was. Winner number one, it's got to be Patrick Peterson. Well, actually, uh, 1A. Nope, that's 1-11. Amber is the color of your energy. All right, so 1A, 1B, Patrick Peterson, Zadarius Smith, both winning the Man of the Match award. There we go. Uh, different shade of yellow. Man, uh, men of the Match, Patrick Peterson against his former team. Were, it's kind of surprising because last year, week two, it, this wasn't he wasn't as hyped. But this time around, I don't know if it's him talking junk with New Hopkins, his former teammate and his guy, but he was dialed in. Three passes broken up. Two absolute BS penalties on him, by the way. It's just r ridiculous. But pass uh, broke up uh, A.J. Green potential touchdown in the end zone. Third down pass break up against Robbie Anderson. And just Patrick Peterson's out here playing well, reading uh, the, the routes and the concepts phenomenally, and he just looked – like he turned back the clock five to seven years. He just looked fantastic, man. Also, Zadarius Smith uh, looking good. Three sacks, uh, including basically dominating that final drive against Arizona. Uh, Jaron Allen sack dance homage on this first one. It's great, man. Seven tackles. Also, him fighting through injury. Harrison Phillips and him bump knees. Uh, but uh, also, respect to the rest of the pass rush. Ross Blacklock, Patrick Jones is second. Daniil, Wanham at times. They really got after uh, Kyler Murray's ass. Winner number three, Dalvin Cook, where Dalvin ran harder than an 87 Chevy, man. Uh, 20 carries for a buck 11. Uh, also uh, had five catches for 30 yards. Averaged 5.6 yards per carry. First 100 yard rushing game of the season. Also got himself a touchdown. And Dalvin. He was just playing hard, man. It's a continuation of his great play at the end of the Miami game, uh, and Arizona just didn't have an answer. Like, number four was coming for you all freaking day long. Number four, also into this, uh, the run blocking. So offensive line, tight ends, wide receivers, all blocking downhill, all dominant in the run game. Now, different issue for pass blocking, which, ugh, yikes. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Uh, winner number five, Eric Kendricks. Uh, this is a great day. Uh, I think it was coming off the bye. The veterans were rested, and you really saw an extra spring, spring to their step because Kendricks turned back the clock, man. Seven tackles, a tackle for loss, a really nice pass breakup on the screen, and he helped keep Kyler corralled. It was like him, Jordan Hicks, Asamo was in there a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, winner number six, Harrison Smith. Six tackles, interception of Kyler in the third, which helped swing the momentum, broke up the two point conversion, uh, going to New. Hopkins and Harrison Smith played himself a phenomenal game. Also, seven Adam Thielen again. This is the uh, a big veterans game. Like Peterson, Zadarius, uh, Kendricks, Harrison, Thielen all had themselves a ball game, man. But six catches for six and seven on seven targets, especially in the first half, making plays, moving the chains, got dinged up at times. Uh, also, he moved a third all time on the Vikings. Third on the Vikings all-time catch list behind Chris Carter and Randy Moss. That's ah, pretty, pretty, pretty good territory to be in, man. Number eight. So it wasn't the Kirk Tober that we ordered, but it's still pretty good. Uh, but Kirk, uh, 232 yards passing, also ran for a 17-yard touchdown to kick things off. Two touchdowns, a 103 quarterback rating, but... It still felt there was meat on the bone. It still felt there was a couple of throws that Kirk could have had, a couple of play calls that Kevin O'Connell could have done better. Could have easily been more aggressive down the stretch, but, you know. Winner number 10, Cameron Tiny Dancer. Now everyone's going to point to, oh, well, New Hopkins uh, cooked him. 
New Hopkins is going to get his. And Dancer wasn't matched up on him man-to-man all the time. A lot of it was soft zone. I mean, a lot of it was uh, they were very adept at finding the holes in the cover three as well as the cover two. So, I mean, I, I really don't fault Dancer at all. But Dancer, you know, we said, like, one of our favorite things about Dancer is that he's not afraid to put his nose in there, mix it up, make tackles, come up and make plays on screens. I mean, Cameron Tiny Dancer is a, a tough physical cornerback, which you would not – expect from his frame uh and he is turning into one of the better corners in the game yeah respect and uh, then winner number 11 alexander freaking madison man eight yards per carry 40 yards total uh also brought in the touchdown it's good it's, it's just good times baby uh number 12 the kevin o'connell red zone play calling slash design so first game over 30 points mama we did it a five for five in the red zone uh in terms of touchdowns and like the play on on the Dalvin thirty yard run, which you know the fifteen yards was called back because Bradbury was out there talking junk. Uh, but the the fake dive and then the pitch out to Dalvin was just beautiful, man. Just beautiful, gorgeous. Uh, Jordan Hicks. Uh, oh yeah, the other Arizona Cardinal revenge game. Six tackles as well as the fourth and four tackle on Eno Benjamin. A uh, big time, a big time stop, man, uh, by Jordan Hicks. Uh, Fourteen Justin Jefferson. Where it seems like it was very quiet. Like Byron Murphy. You know, sore back and all was out there doing some good work, but six catches for 98 on eight targets. Relatively quiet game, but you could tell that he was impacting their defense. Like he was being doubled, uh, he was getting attention all the time. Also, he had that triple coverage contested catch where Cousins just threw it up down uh, the left sideline, and Jefferson was like, "Ah, eh, mine, 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 mine." Uh, Ryan Wright, winner number 15. Just first off, he deserves some All Pro consideration uh, for punting. Although, I mean, there's. Yeah, uh, it's going to go to the Niners puncher. Uh, but also the elite flop uh, on what turned out to be the muff punt. You're just like, ah, the World Cup is coming up, man. Uh, 16, decoy Jalen Rieger. Now, he didn't do anything on offense. was okay on returning. But his jet sweep action. So the jet sweep as well as the shovel pass touchdown a couple weeks ago. Like, that sticks out in a defensive coordinator's minds. And you could tell, like, Re, uh, Rager got attention when Johnny Munt had his touchdown as well as the Dalvin Cook touchdown. So uh, I do like that Kevin O'Connell is layering upon what they've shown on film that he knows that defense coordinators are seeing and having counters to the counters and counters to the counters to the counters. All, all that. 17 to Neil Hunter where, I mean, no sacks, but getting pressure, doing the little things, setting the edge, contained, getting pressure. I, I do like that he is playing more of his natural left defensive end side uh, against the right tackles and tight ends. Uh, I like that he's more hand in the dirt. So I think that Donatel's like, you know, let, let's just go back to what he's really good at. 18, the Chris Boyd, King Kenne, Troy Die trifecta teaming up to wrestle away that muff punt uh, from Greg. Uh, so Chris Boyd made the initial hit. King Kenne made sure that 86 couldn't get back on the ball, and then Troy Dye found, found the ball. It was really just a phenomenal job there. K.J. Osborne, that dude, front right corner of the end zone, uh, the go-ahead score, as well as Cameron Beasy. Well, not go-ahead, but, you know, the, the brace, Put, putting the Vikings up by eight because Greg Joseph p- couldn't put them up by nine. Not that I'm bitter. Uh, and then Cam Beasy, the interception in, in the fourth. Now, like, like we say, I mean, the Vikings won the turnover battle three to one, and it still came down to the end, which shouldn't happen, but is what it is losers gary bradbury i mean wh- wh- why are you talking junk man or hey i actually like the i actually like the swag i actually like the spunk but doing it in a way where you're not gonna get penalized and hurt the team man it's ridiculous the second offensive drive and also i could add the the two final offensive drives where they really just settled just to grind some clock even though they could put things away but the second offensive drive cousins could have run for the first and then the play call on fourth down was too cute i, I think o'connell is still dilating and calibrating his play calling we, we've seen some really good stuff and we've seen some very messed up as well the defense before the half as well as the defense sporadically throughout the second half where hey turnovers are fantastic sacks are fantastic but eh, and, and schlaer was still talking about it. it's like oh, oh it's a soft it's the marshmallow defense hey how about instead of letting them march in between the 20s, how about we don't let them do that either? Because that greatly affects uh, how field position plays out. But, yeah. Uh, number four, Ed Ingram. 
Ed Ingram did not have a good day. So he obviously struggled against J.J. Watt, Arizona, uh, and Vance Joseph were like, hey, we're, we're going to isolate J.J. Watt on the rookie. Um, bench press on that third down sack, tripping penalty, gave up the strip sack pressure. It was just not good overall. And it, it was beyond that. It was like, hey, he struggled against Isaiah Simmons. Isaiah Simmons is basically a safety. Like, you can't block a safety, bro. I mean, come on. Also, Greg Joseph. My God. So <clears throat> we want to give third leg Greg – well, he's not he's not deserving of that nickname anymore. We want to give Greg Joseph some leeway and latitude. Like his five missed field goals this year have all been from 50 plus, but the trajectory of his before halftime kick was so low that it was easily blocked and it really could have been run back for a touchdown by Arizona. The lucky it didn't. And also he's missed three point afters, which is just inexcusable. And he Greg Joseph is the reason this game was still close at the end. Like there's a universe of difference between being up by eight and being up by nine, which Vikings should have been easily. Uh, loser, uh, well, all, the Vikings need to bring in kicking competition this week. Maybe not sign, but tryouts. Try out kickers. Make sure that Greg Joseph sees it's like, hey, if I don't get my ish together, my ass is on the line, man. Uh, loser number six, Christian Derrissaw spike. So after Dalvin's touchdown, uh, he gave the ball to Derrissaw, which I, I love when, uh, when, when running backs, quarterbacks, receivers – they, they, they do that, just give it to offensive linemen. But Dare saw a spike, man. It, it was like a 10% of a Gronk spike. It was like dainty. Like for a man that size. Come on, man. Uh, then Vikings penalties, 10 penalties, the most uh, in a game this year. Really helped keep the Cardinals in it. Uh, ridiculous. Also, Cliff Kingsbury's use of timeouts. So it's frustrating. He did this first and the second half where Arizona was going to have a delay a game, uh, but he's like, oh, timeout. Time out. And it's a complete free roll. It's a complete angle where, hey, if so he can stand on the sideline next to the side judge, like, ah, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. And if they get the playoff and they don't have a penalty, you'd be like, oh, no, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. But if they get a penalty, you'd be like, hey, I call time out. It's ridiculous. Like, I hate it. 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 But whatever. Like we said, running away. Running away from me, beating me down. Viking six and one, getting it done. It, it doesn't matter what that score in the middle is, but the win is a win is a win. And it is extremely hard to win a game in the National Football League. It's nay impossible to win five games in a row, but the Vikings are doing it, looking to win six games in a row at, at Washington next week against the Commies. And then rolling into Buffalo. Are both teams going to be seven and one? Showdown? Potential Super Bowl matchup? Question mark? And then you got the Cowboys at home. The Vikings, a nice ele- uh, five out of six games at home. Cowboys, Patriots, Jets, Colts, Giants, uh, interspersed with a uh, trip to Detroit, which is kind of nice because it's not that far of a distance. So, I mean, the Vikings, after road uh, games at the Commies and Bills, everything's in front of them, man. Everything's in front of them. There is no excuse why the Vikings can't secure the two seed, maybe even the one seed if Philly slips up, even though that's going to be a, a, a tall order, but the Vikings are six and one and their only loss of the season against is against the only undefeated team left in the league. And the Eagles look really, really good right now. So here you go. But got this, got this man, but your thoughts are thoughts of Vikings. Get it done. 34 to uh, 26 against the Cardinals. Move to six and one on the season. Extend their lead in the NFC Norris division. Let us know your thoughts and our thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe for daily Vikings takes. Once worth the work, put a little something in the Venmo. But to next time, Skull Production Value.